É, foi tipo, na época, é tipo um sequestro, né? Ele disse, we're not gonna let you guys out. We don't know which house it was or nothing, you know what I mean? His family hadn't heard from him for, for like... like 40 days or something. Really? Yeah. Were they worried about you? Everybody got worried because, uh, you know, we hear horrible stories too, like... They had guns and everything. They didn't let us leave the room. They feed us like once a day, something. I lost 26 pounds. We thought we were going back, you know, to Brazil. Glover was locked inside that house because he was trying to enter the U.S. Illegally. Let's back up a step. How'd you do it? Yeah, how, 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 scary, how, how, how did you get here? scary is that story? I mean, come on. I was born in Sobralia, Minas Gerais, small town. How many people live there? In that town, maybe uh, 2,000. I grew up in a farm my whole life. My father is like a hardcore, you know what I mean? I was about 14, 15 years old. He was uh, this baby cow, was about 150, 200 pounds, strong, you know? I was like just to, to hold him in the rope and they charged me, you know? And I, I let go the rope and I run. And my father got so mad at me. And I got mad at him and I went to charge this baby cow. And we fought and he kicked me out a couple of times and I got my ass kicked, but I, I was able to take him down. And he's like, that's how you should be done in the first place. And I have that my whole life, man. Aí que eu comecei a ver esses filmes, que eu comecei a arrumar uns amigos lá de escola mesmo. You watch like Rocky Balboa hit the bags and I go in and hit the banana tree out pretending I'm like fighting the guys, you know? Quebrou as tudo, tanto da chute com a canela naquelas bananeiras, mataram. I wanted to be a professional athlete, but in my hometown was very difficult to start. There was no gym, no equipment, no electricity. Aí vi, fazia musculação com peso de cimento, essas coisas assim. Tem que carregar pedra, é só cá, piso, que esse serviço mais bruto que gostar de fazer. Meu sonho era ter uma academia de musculação no Sobralha. Até ali, ter uma academia de musculação no Sobralha que ia ser a primeira. Ele chegava da, do serviço umas 5 horas, tomava um banho, punha um shortinho e ia malhar. Eu brigava muito com ele por causa daquilo. Sobrar não tinha futuro, ele trabalhava muito durante o dia. Você tinha talento para ser um bom fighter. E, em vez disso, você se tornou um leitor. Ele disse, eu sou um bom segundo de um star. Para viver? É uma vida de vida. My uncle that I was working with, I was working so hard for him, and he said, you need to go to the United States. If you work construction the way you work here, you're gonna be a millionaire there. But of course, it's easier said than done. Like 99, it's almost impossible you're gonna get a visa. Wow. He said, father, I'm going there, that two years, if God wants, I'll pay my account. First thing, I'll buy a camion to work. I'll have to get my day to go there. About $9,000 at the time, so... Ele ia pensando nas pessoas, não é tanto nele. Ele pensando mais em ajudar meu pai. I was 19 years old, 18, 19 years old. I jump in this journey, going like, you never know, was, you know, dangerous trip too, kind of, you know? Did you fear for your life? The people who migrate to the U.S. don't only come from South America, they come from all over the world. Migrants and refugees from around the world including Syria, Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Nepal, are willing to risk everything for a long-shot chance of reaching the USA. With a war that we have in Cameroon, Boko Haram killing all our brothers. We don't have no choice than to roam, to go hide ourselves somewhere. Take him. Take him. Take him. 20-year-old Dunya is from Honduras. She is six months pregnant and is traveling with her four-year-old son. Back home, they say local gangs tried to kill them when they took over their neighborhood. Yet another shooting here, and this is one of the driving forces that compels so many people to leave the country for the U.S. This is the journey that millions of people take every single year. We went to Guerrero Sobralia, first thing going to Rio de Janeiro. From Rio, Glover takes a plane to Bogota. Coyotes enter the picture. Migrants seek out locals who know the terrain, black market guides known as coyotes. Oh, they're always dangerous, you know, you in the hand of, you don't know who is going to cross the desert. Migrants trust these people with their lives, although they know nothing about them. They can steal from you, they can yeah, steal. they can do whatever, I man, you don't know. The most dangerous part of the trip is the passage between Colombia and Panama. It's known as the Darien Gap. It's a 150-kilometer jungle wilderness that no sane person would dare enter. It's a lot of crisscrossing rivers, and so we've got about seven more hours to go on foot. Nobody knows how many died out here. Are you scared about this trip? Very, very scared, but I don't have any choice. Evelyn tells me she was a hairdresser in her home country, Cameroon. 
Now, she's in the fiercest of jungles. Once you make your way through the Darien Gap, you're gonna go through Panama and Costa Rica, most often by bus. Bus, train, yeah, a lot of bus. If you ask me back then, like, where you are right now? I don't know. I just say, no, I'm going to America. In Nicaragua, you'll start encountering the first legs of migrant caravans. Caravans are essentially large group of migrants walking their way up to the US. Every night, they come together, feeling safer in a large group. Their shoes are worn from the walk. Many have already been on the road for 500 miles. Tonight, the migrant caravan is growing. A massive migrant caravan is winding its way towards the U.S. One of the largest caravans ever recorded in 2022 had more than 15,000 people. 70% of those were women and children. Of course, local populations are disrupted by caravans. Protests are frequent. They're here to use us. The government is spending a lot of money on them already, although there are many poor people here. They're not migrants. They're invaders. Without urgent action, protests like this could lead to an all-out attack on migrants. Police forces in Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico will often try to stop and dismantle the caravans. The moment Guatemalan police broke up a caravan of thousands of people from Honduras. One of the reasons is the city being ill-equipped to deal with the influx of people. Their week-long trek through Central America from Honduras, one of the poorest countries in the region, through Guatemala, has brought them here to the gates of Mexico. Their dream is to keep going and get to the United States. Many in this convoy or caravan are upset that they're being portrayed by some as the worst of humanity. <laughs> now covering migration, I've never seen anything quite like this. This is a humanitarian crisis. It's not just a humanitarian crisis. It's a full-on industry. Sometimes also the Mexican cartels who charge a fee to the migrants. It's well known. They make millions out of it. Says he traffics people in this corridor controlled by the Sinaloa cartel, which was formerly headed by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. What do you charge for your services? Cuatro y cinco mil dólares por ponerlos en la frontera de Tijuana. Tijuana, Estados Unidos, ¿no? Cada mes llevo entre 21. So on average, that's 4,500 times 21, 95K per month times 12 for $1.1 million per year for one operation. The total profits of this industry is $13 billion. Here's the crazy part. But after it was getting dangerous because of the the drug dealers, you know, the, the cartels yeah. start like actually, you know, getting people, make those people like some slave. It was it was little crazy stories going on. So Mexican cartels will often force migrants to smuggle drugs across the borders. So you might leave your country a non-citizen, but you arrive to America as a criminal. According to the DEA, 
Agents are already starting to see a small rise in cases of migrants being enlisted to carry drugs like these across the border. And they actually tried to force Glover to do it. But they're like, hey, my, hey, amigo, you bring this bag for us, like, you know, nice and simple. And you, I say, no, I, uh, I have my bag. I'm paying $9,000 to cross this day, man. I need to carry stuff for you. I don't know what it was. It could be drugs, though. You know, that's what I, I, that's why I didn't take. I say, I'm not taking it. So finally comes the time to cross to the U.S. 